Russell Sager, uh, who is this, she's such an important part of this community because she's the person that I've met uh, who cares the most for what's going on with the children of Miami and um, to make sure no child gets forgotten for their most important day. So Rachel, I love Style Saves, I love what you stand for, and I want to understand what inspired you to start this journey. Well, I grew up in a middle class family and you know I saw the importance of having new things or nice things for back to school so as I grew and you know I came into the fashion industry and you know was working with different brands and different retailers as soon as I had the opportunity to use my career to give back to the community I did so I started Style Saves in 2011 and what were you doing before in the so, fashion world? So I was a fashion stylist. I was with Ford and Wilhelmina. I was working with a lot of brands, doing their ad campaigns, editorial, celebrity. Through that, I was able to you know, leverage my relationships to give back to the community. So getting old inventory or exactly. doing fashion show, producing fashion show fundraiser or fashion focused events. Mm -hmm. And now I use those same skills to host and dress and style and produce large scale events that benefit underprivileged students across the world, really. This is not like a normal event where, yeah, here's your dress, whatever. You, you put a party together. Like, these events are pure fun. There's colors. All the artists in yeah. the community help you. So tell me more about that. So um, we do a lot of events. A lot of, we work with a lot of big brands. You know, we just did an event, an event with the Museum of Ice Cream. Upcoming, we have an event with Everj, um, Rebecca Taylor, Zimmerman. Yeah, so we have a lot of great relationships, and what we do is we try to combine fashion with philanthropy. We say that that's, you know, our mantra and our inspiration for everything, you know, so using our skills and our relationships to give back to the community. So for us, our biggest event of the year is Style Safe Swim. It's a fashion show fundraiser, so we get really great hosts to come on board. It's during Swim Week. Last year it was Rocky Barnes. Yeah, so we have Rocky Barnes, Miss Universe, oh, Paulina people, de yes. la Vega. Um, so this year we're showing Everj. We'll be at the Satai. It's the first time that they've ever shown Swim. And we sell out over 500 tickets every year. And 100% of the proceeds from that event go towards our back to school event. So our back to school event is our biggest give back of the year. And that's in August where we send over 5,000 kids back to school with um, uniforms, backpacks, shoes, accessories, school supplies. So we're dressing over 5,000 kids. It's everyone from homeless shelters to migrant camps to foster care in between. So, you know, we're really hitting like every and any demographic that we can under that range from South Miami all the way up to Palm Beach. And it's the best supplies as well. Like I remember this year, it was like yeah, it's, beautiful. it's so fun. We get, yes. a lot of, we get a lot of good sponsors for that too. So we mm -hmm. work with people like Wrangler and Fast Forward and they'll give us like denim and backpacks or um, you know, we have all these other sponsors that will kind of come in and like do things for the kids. Like, you know, G Beauty will come and do hair and makeup if it's for prom or a Men's Warehouse will donate, um, you know, millions of dollars worth of, you know, old dead stock suits for something like Project Prom. And we just have all these really great relationships so we're able to always give the kids the coolest stuff. I mean, Top Shop just donated a ton of accessories or Fab Shoes gave us like beautiful shoes. So it's really cool because for us it's so important to have the ability to give the kids new stuff. You know, we accept donations of lightly used stuff, like if it's dead stock or samples, whatever. But our focus is providing these kids with things that are going to make them feel good. Giving them confidence through clothes and a fresh start through fashion. That so changes everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. You know, for them to be able to go to prom, which is a milestone event, or go to back to school, their first day of school, and to show up and be wearing new stuff and have the tools that they need to succeed is so important. And, you know, a lot of these kids without us are overlooked. You have mothers that have two, three, four kids that they need to put into school. Uniforms cost between 50 and $60 each. 
they're going to need at least two or three. Mm -hmm. They're sing single parents. They have maybe one job. It's about it's hundreds. Of, we're talking hundreds of dollars to send your kid back to school with just the basic fundamental tools that they need to start the year. So by us helping and supporting those families that need it the most, you know, we're giving the kids the opportunity to do better ultimately in school, in life, and succeed, and give them the same opportunities that students that have, you know, the means are given. And that's it's so important. And simply for them to know that someone cares. Yeah. I'm sure that has to make such a great, I mean, especially in the times we're living, where there's all these elements of violence and things happening. Maybe if someone cares, and it, 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 the, the it's future, so you're changing the future of all these children. You're also changing their temperament and their mentality. The kids mm -hmm. that are sent to school and they don't have what the others have, you know, their self-confidence is low, they don't feel good, those are the ones that aren't going to do well, are going to, you know, maybe be outcast or be picked on or be bullied. So you're preventing a whole laundry list of different things, not, you know, just making them feel cool, which they also are, but, you know, you're giving them self-confidence. And self-confidence at such an early age helps them in their formative years to be better people in general and just do better. What is your uh, guiding business philosophy? even if this is not a regular business? My guiding business philosophy is to keep growing and expanding so that I'm able to help more people. Went from doing 50 kids our first year to 250 to 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 to 4,000, this year 5,000. So every year we're growing, we're helping more kids, we're able to do more activations. We started off just doing back to school, now we also do prom. We do international service trips where we're sending stuff to Colombia, Colombia, Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, South Africa annually. So we're South Africa. Yeah, we actually we did a project there two years ago, and then we had one of the girls who also attended Oprah's school. She ended up incorporating a style saves in South Africa. It's a snowball effect. So when you help these kids, it shows them the you know a, a different path, a different way. And you know this girl is a girl that was in an orphanage, and she took. She took it upon herself to help others, to do give backs, to dress girls for prom and graduation. And we're incorporated, we keep in touch, like we send her supplies if she is doing an activation. And then, How know, old is she? 17. It's insane. Okay. You know, we have two schools in Miami Dade County um, that have clubs. One of them is Carrollton, so it's an all girl oh, school yes. in South Miami. You get two. Freshman approached me two years ago, or two or three years ago, approached me and said, I want to start a Style Saves chapter at my school. So now we have a Style Saves club at Carrollton with 30 girls that, you know, support all of our fundraisers and events and, you know, are so sweet. But it's just inspiring new generations of leaders in the philanthropic industry. You know, we have all of these, like, moms who have been supporters of Style Saves for the past nine years, and now they're bringing their kids. They're bringing their kids to all the events. Like, this is the new generation. So it's about, you know, inspiring and motivating the next generation to keep it going and keep it moving and instilling those values so that they know what's important and pass it along. Absolutely. And what is the best, the best part of your day while doing this? The best part of my day is exactly what you just saw. When you're able to make a difference in someone's life and yeah. genuinely make someone happy, and you know that you're changing someone's night or, you know, someone's experience, whether it's at prom or first day of school or whatever it is, like if you can make a difference, I think that's the best part of the day. And uh, just to put it into context, like right now there was this 14-year-old girl who was about to go through her prom and she was here with her baby brother and the mother. They were searching for the dress for a Parisian-themed party. <laughs> if you had seen her face, like she, it was such a special moment for her. You could see that she was ready for it and feeling it and the mom was so <laughs> she was proud. so happy. Yes. But that's what we love, like being able to see a girl like really find that something that she likes and makes her happy and she's excited about like getting something new, you know, the tags on it and you know, you feel good about it, the shoes are in the box, the dress has like a garment bag on it, you feel nice, like it's an experience, it's ex like something that these kids don't necessarily ever have the opportunity to get otherwise. So for them, it's so impactful. And they'll remember it, and they feel good about themselves. They're happy, like we're genuinely making these kids you know, happy. So it's, it's really fulfilling. What are some of the obstacles you've encountered along the way? Because I'm sure it's also not easy to of be course. able to put all this together. 
I mean, I started the charity when I was 23, and at the time, my family said to me, what do you mean you're starting a charity? You need a charity, you know? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're Find still, the job, girl. You're still in school. I was still in school. <laughs> and, you know, for me, trying to figure out how to incorporate it so that it was legally and financially smooth sailing took, you know, it, that took the most time because when you're trying to set up your own business, Incorporating it's one thing, but then how am I how am I going to make sure that this is done legally? You know, finding the right lawyers, oh God, doing yes. all your homework, making sure that all the finances are correct. Like these are things that you don't necessarily like learn when you're in school. I was studying like marketing and fashion, so for me, like you know, starting a charity was definitely not a course that I took, and it was really about doing my research and trying to figure out who were the right people to make sure that this was done the right way. And that was so, so important because when you're starting a charity and you're in, you know, the charity industry, like, it's really important to make sure that it legally and financially makes sense yes. and you're doing it the right way. So mm -hmm. for me, yeah. like that was, I would say the biggest obstacle and that was just at the beginning. And then other than that, it was more so of just keeping up with the demand. I almost felt like it was my obligation moving forward. Like, I have to do this because if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Are these kids going to go without? I feel like the weight of thousands of parents on my shoulders. Oh, like, my God. Like yeah, I how do you choose? It's not like... But also, if I don't do it, then who's doing gonna it? do it. And then they go without. And just knowing that I can help and I'm not doing it, I would have to. Like, I have to do it. What makes it all worth it? Making a making kid smile. Seeing their smile. Seeing their happiness. And just knowing in the back of your head that they're starting school and they're okay. Happy. I remember. Even, I mean, it doesn't matter. We've all been through that. Of course, for them it's a lot harder, but like the first day of school, it's a big deal. Of course. You can't sleep the night before. You want to know what you're going to wear and what if you don't have a condition. You know, even like throughout the school year too, you know, we, so we work a lot with the Guatemala Mind Center, which is the children of migrant workers in Palm Beach. And a lot of people say, wait, there's organizations that need help in Palm Beach. Yeah, there is. I was and, also, yeah. Right. Interesting. There is. And, you know, these kids are such a small group of students that are so wonderful. There's a couple hundred of them that are in the program. And, you know, they come down on the bus every year for back to school. And throughout the school year, they need resupplies, too. Like, we just did an event where we brought them all down to go to the Museum of Ice Cream, and then we gave them new uniforms and new backpacks because throughout the year the kids are losing stuff. Of course. Right. So good point I hadn't thought so of that it's part. Not even, it's not even just the first day of school. They need it throughout the year. So we have, you know, this amazing space that was donated up to us by the Bond Collective and we're able to be here at the space and use it throughout the year. So, you know, if a group of students like the Guatemala Mind Center come to us in January and say we need backpacks, uniforms, because all the kids ran out. We can say, yes, no problem, we can help you, because we have the facility and the ability to, you know, allocate those and get those kids space, service. Right, or, you know, we have girls that come in for different things throughout the year, like Miami-Dade um, Miami -Dade College just reached out to me and they said, hi, we have a girl that's graduating and has nothing to wear to the graduation ceremony. Do you have any clothes? Yeah, of course, come by. So she's coming by tomorrow. You know, it's all these, like, different things, the, all these, like, stories and all these kids that get swept under the rug that you don't even ever hear about or, you know, see or think about that are coming to us on an ongoing basis because they need help, and that's what we're here for. What is your definition of success? I would say that the definition of success for me is being happy and feeling fulfilled with what you choose to do in life. I mean, it's not about making money. It's yeah, more absolutely. about making mm -hmm. people happy, you know, so I... That define, moment, I define the success by how many people I'm able to help, you know, how many more children was I able to reach, how many more cities can I operate in, how many, you know, more volunteers, how many more donations, like, all this stuff inspires me and motivates me to be a better person in life and ultimately say that I'm successful. There is a lot of hope in the generation that's coming, right? And I find that it's, 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 it's so special. Definitely. It's I mean, you can see it by all the... to see what's going to happen with all these kids. We have, so, we have so many kids that come in here to volunteer and intern with Style of Saves mm -hmm. ongoing every semester. I get tons of students that want to be here. And that just shows me these kids are motivated, they're driven. They you know, they're here not because they're getting paid and mm -hmm. they're dedicating their time out of their life and their free time so that they can give back to the community. And there's nothing more inspiring to see 
kids of the next generation coming in and really feeling motivated and trying to make change in the world. How can people help you? Like the people that will be watching this, what can they do to help? <laughs> so stylesafes.org, which it's really great actually. So we all we all do the design in house for the entire interface. But if you go to it, you'll see like everything that we show is so interactive. You can see all of the events that we do, all the fundraisers that we do. You can get involved as a volunteer, as a sponsor, and you can also follow everything on social media. So if you go to Ad Style, see yeah, on Facebook, Instagram, media. or Twitter, mm -hmm. we're super active. We want to make sure that we're always engaging with the community, that we're showing what we're doing. So at any given time, like our stories are going, like you can see an active feed, but you know, for us, that's the best way to connect. And we always post about when we need volunteers or when we have upcoming events and things like that. So in today's age, it makes the most sense. We also send, you know, e and things like that. But for the most part, social media and the website are the biggest ways to get involved with us. Thank you so much, Rachel. It's it's so important for Miami to have people like you that take care of all well, Thank you segments. for coming to see us. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we got. Yeah. <laughs>